saying happy birthday phantom limb i just saw your message he says the perfect birthday present glad to be here and i hope you've been well jack including everyone here yes i am well thank you very much <clears throat> yo uh david yo big shark yo krask how are we doing What's your favourite fruit and vegetable? Instantly, right out the gate with a question. Uh, uh, favourite vegetable, potato, favourite fruit, probably raspberries or grapes. I'll, I'll go with grapes because I literally just had some grapes. How many Ang Lee movies have I seen? Crouch Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Hulk, Breakback Mountain. I think one other, but I can't remember it now. Um, anyway, so let's carry on. Uh, I've got some reeds here I'm going to be painting. And, um, oh, actually, let's, let me just uh, do that for two seconds. Just getting a file open. Okay, there we go. All right, good. Yo, Ilya, how are you doing? Yes, yeah, so anyway, let's get some painting. So basically, because of lockdown in the UK, it means that every Sundays now I can do some live streaming, um, 12 till 3, same as Tuesdays. And I'll continue doing my Tuesday streams as well. So basically, you get an extra stream a week for, uh, for four weeks, so, or three weeks, maybe maybe three weeks unless the lockdown is extended um, but also Fridays because I'd usually work Fridays I've got Fridays off now I don't stream on Fridays but I do um, work on Dino Defenders on Fridays as well now so but I just want to do that so it's not like I'm live streaming that's where I can get like a lot of the sort of more spoilery stuff done behind the scenes so but let's see how we get on today Actually, I want to cut out all the reeds. That's what I'm going to be trying to do today. Get all the reeds done. Uh, no, I haven't read all the Jurassic Park comics. Um, <laughs> you have a thousand questions in the stream. I get to uh, ask the whole thing. <laughs> oh wait, we need some music. Let's get some music on the go. That's all right. Uh, Phantom Lim says this is super random. Qu this is a super random question. Have you ever had to make a road? The characters are driving on separate a separate layer in the Photoshop. Have you ever had to make a road the characters are driving on a separate layer in Photoshop? Yes. Why? Many times, I think. I'll say Big Shark. Uh, I don't know if you saw my message in uh, in the Discord group, so I haven't checked it. But your guess for the dinosaur the tail is is not right just thought of a, see you've now got some live behind the scenes stuff I literally just thought where's my phone just thought about a line of dialogue I want to put in episode 4 and it's not really a well, it's a kind of detail uh, where are we looking just want to jot this down um, 
Do I know defenders? Uh, so I want character to say. Now these things are free. Who knows how quickly they will breed into the ecosystem and bring about major change to which another character is going to reply they've been grown uh, what do you call it they've been grown to be sterile because <clears throat> I'm not doing the whole Jurassic Park, you know, the all-female thing. These dinosaurs are grown, so they can't even breed whatsoever. Yeah, they have been grown to be sterile. There's no way they'll survive in this jungle. Mm -hmm. There you go. Some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, what's your favourite animated movie and animated show? Uh, I don't know. I don't really think about favourites too much. I just enjoy stuff. Um, favourite animated movie? I don't know. There's too many I like. Krask says, hey Jack, what are your thoughts on people unfairly judging Wheatley and Eli? People are always allowed their own opinions, but I definitely feel they get an unfair shake in the fandom. Um, I think it's because... I think one of the reasons why they get a shakedown is because they do certain things that are quite stereotypical for villains of movies, right? For example, like they have Owen and Claire in a cage, and then they reveal their whole plan or whatever it is and then they you know Wheatley's like what are we going to do with them and then he says like as far as I'm concerned as far as everyone concerns they burned up on the island so it's like they're going to deal with them later and it's like hinted at that they might kill them but they do it later and it's a very kind of stereotypical villain thing to do you know why don't why don't you just kill them there and then uh and then worry about disposing the bodies later or whatever. I mean, you've got dinosaurs there. You could very much easily feed Owen and Claire to the dinosaurs. Um, so that's why I think people don't like... like they, They'll say like they're very stereotypical villains or whatever. You know, Wheatley with his teeth collection and all that. But, you know, that that's understandable. But I know people in real life who who have like watched documentaries about people in real life who do stuff like that so you know there's a reason why villains in movies tend to do that sort of stuff um, I don't personally mind it I think they're fine characters I like Eli Mills reminds me of Dodson from the Lost World book so I kind of like that angle they go for um, but yeah no, I think that's it My favourite Guillermo del Toro movie is probably Pacific Rim. Yeah, I'm that much of a uh, ignoramus. I don't pick something classy like Pan's Labyrinth or Hellboy, <laughs> Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. <laughs> no, I like Pacific Rim. I have a lot of fun with that movie. Oh, I just want to stipulate something for those of you who've watched the trimmed John Hammond uh, is not a good guy in the Lost World uh, video that I did. Or like, you know, I trimmed it from the live stream. Uh, I had a question in the comments about that asking, you know, hang on, you wrote on the websites, the viral websites for Fallen Kingdom that Hammond's dying wish to Masrani was for the animals to live in peace. 
and then you say that his dying wish was to have the park back again. I have to give you some context. I forgot to mention that I was talking about the movies in a from a purely on-screen evidence only. So like if you don't take any other expanded canon into account, uh, then if you go just by the movies, it still works. You know, Hammond changing his mind about the park still makes sense given what his character is like in the Lost World. Um, but yeah, no, yeah. His dying wish to Simon Masrani was for the animals to live in peace. And Simon Masrani took that as, okay, well, I can get this Jurassic Park operation back off the ground and we can look after the dinosaurs firsthand. It's partly the reason why uh, Masrani says to Claire, the first time he sees Claire in the film, the first thing he asks her is how's my park doing? And then he asks are the animals enjoying life? Like he wants them to be uh, you know, enjoying their time there. He's like, you can see in their eyes and all this sort of stuff. But yeah, someone was a bit confused. They're like, wait, you wrote in the canon that his dying wish wasn't for the new park. It was for uh, you know, for the dinosaurs to live in peace, which is what Colin said that we should write because <coughs> I was talking to Colin about the uh, the Hammond's dying wish line trying to clarify it for myself because I was a little bit confused and he was like no his dying wish was basically have the animals live in peace But if, yeah, if you don't take the expanded canon, it still works because Hammond, Hammond could very easily have changed his mind about the park. There's also something I also wanted to mention about Hammond uh, <laughs> in The Lost World. And I don't hear anyone really talking about this. So the whole f the, f the whole end famous line where he's like, life, where he's like, these animals require our absence in order to survive. And if we could just step inside and trust in nature, life will find a way. So early on in the film, right, Hammond says to Malcolm, he's like, you were, right, you were right and I was wrong there. Did you ever expect to hear me say such a thing? And he's like, life will find a way, as you most once eloquently put it. So he acknowledges that Malcolm said that line, and then lucky for him, Malcolm was asleep when he was on CNN talking about uh, the animals on the island, because then he just plagiarizes, or he just steals Malcolm's line uh, on the news. And it's just so funny that he just does it so flippantly, and you know, if Malcolm was awake, he'd be like, now he's just stealing my line, <laughs> stealing my words. I was just thought it was quite funny that Hammond's famous last line in the Lost World is "Life will find a way." It's him stealing uh, words from Malcolm. It is a good line, yeah. Uh, Big Shark, Phantom Limb says definitely. Even when he was convinced Dress Park was a failure, that last glimpse he takes before they get on the helicopter really shows how deeply he wanted it to work. Yeah, exactly. There's like. He says he doesn't want to endorse the park, which uh, Alan Grant says, I've decided not to endorse your park. And he's like, so have I. Which, you know, back in 1993 did mean, like, you know, the park is, has not been endorsed. But I wouldn't put it past uh, Hammond to go, like, if they did shoot a scene with him and Grant, if this was, ever, like, in another dimension or something, this could happen. He's like, no, 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 Grant, I, I did not endorse my park. But Simon Masrani's park will be the crowning jewel of InGen's achievements, or something like that. Like he, he would talk his way around it because that's what he's best at doing. How many samurai movies have you seen? I think you've asked... No, you asked me ninja movies last time. Uh, I have no idea.
Is your favourite Tom Cruise movie The Last Samurai? No, my favourite Tom Cruise movie is prob probably uh, War of the Worlds. Krask says, I have this image in my head of Ian walking up, seeing Hammond's speech on repeat on CNN and being like, mother fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I always just find it quite funny that he like he just, yeah, just he tells Malcolm that, you know, he's once most eloquently put it. Like, in hindsight, wouldn't it have been kind of nice of Hammond if on that CNN thing he went, he went, and these dinosaurs require our absence in order to survive, not our help. And if we could just step aside and trust in nature, like the famous mathematician Ian Malcolm once said, life will find a way. So, like, that would um, discredit Malcolm, or well, it would make Malcolm, it'd give Malcolm back his uh, his reputation that was in tatters uh, at the beginning of Dr uh, The Lost World. You know, with the guy mocking him on the train for dinosaurs. You know, he, he could have helped Malcolm get some of his reputation back, but instead he just steals his line. I know we didn't see the full newscast um, because they probably didn't film anything else because they just filmed that for the for the what 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 we need to see in the movie. But I always just found it funny. Is there hate for the War of the Worlds? So Big Shark says I don't get the hate for the War of the Worlds. Is there hate for the War of the Worlds? I thought it was. Loved. Yeah, no, I meant I meant the movie as well, Big Shark. You'll have to clarify. I, I don't personally. I've never seen anyone hate on the Spielberg War of the Worlds film, but I could be wrong. It could be out there. I've just never seen it myself. That's a surprise. I thought people genuinely like it. I mean, Spielberg's War of the Worlds is basically him uh, applying the same winning formula that he got for Jurassic Park uh, with the aliens. So, like, for example, the big tripods are like the T-Rex. They make that big, booming, iconic sound. So, like, instead of the T-Rex roar, uh, you know, you have the, the tripods going, or whatever that noise is they make. And then that tentacle thing that comes down from the tripods is kind of like the raptor, you know, when they're in the basement and that thing's skulking around. And they even, he even employs, you know, the reflection gag. So, like, the raptors in Jurassic Park get fooled by Lex's reflection when she's inside that little cubby hole trying to pull the door down. And the raptor runs into the, into the reflection thinking it's going to get her. And then in War of the Worlds, there's this, like, tentacle thing coming down from the tripod that's searching through the through the basement and uh and then it gets fooled by the mirror when they put the mirror up and and not only that like when the free aliens come down inside the basement it's almost like the raptors in the kitchen sequence i've always seen like spielberg going oh you know what this worked in jurassic park so let me employ this these tactics again and i don't really have a problem with that because there's a lot different in the war in war of the worlds um and I think if it, you know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, kind of thing. Um, but I, I do notice that, like they, uh, he employs a lot of the same tricks to win us over. Yeah, Phantom Limb. I've also been on the Universal tour and seen the set. Yeah, it's awesome. It's great. Surprisingly, they they kept it up. I guess they were so impressed by it. They were like, "Oh, we can keep this going." Instead of like going, "We need this space for other sets." <laughs> Hello, Will. 
Hello, Mr. Will Self. Ah, it's the Black Sack co-host. Unless there is another Will Self out there. Dun -dun -dun. There is the doppelganger Will Self. Yeah, I thought it was quite funny that, like, on the Universal Backlot Tour, when you're going around the back area, there's, <laughs> they have the, like, Desperate Housewives set, and, like, you go around that, and it's, like, this lovely house, and then you turn the corner and you go into, like, the War of the Worlds, and that's a suburban area, like, completely destroyed. So it kind of looks like... I think it might have even been the opposite way around, but you go through the War of the Worlds set, and then you end up on Desperate Housewives, and it kind of looks like they're... The aliens blew up a part of Desperate Housewives. Mm, no, I haven't seen 12 Angry Men, David. Bill Balf. Okay, so... Almost done cutting all this out. Do you have a dress pack tattoo, said David. Uh, nah. Nah. I almost did one time. Almost decided to get one, but then I figured, you know, why would I scratch this Ferrari? <laughs> this this uh, rusty old Ferrari. Why would I scratch it? This body is vintage. 1990, no, 1988. Vintage body. Get a Dino Defenders Extreme. <laughs> yeah, pasty white Ferrari. Yeah, exactly. Get a Dino Defenders Extreme tattoo instead. No, 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 I'm not getting any tattoos. I, I, no, I don't want to do that. What's your favourite Denzel Washington movie? I saw Flight the other day. I actually really enjoyed that. Um, can't really say what. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head what Denzel Washington movies I've seen. I've seen Man on Fire, that was alright. By Tony Scott. Flight, I'll probably just say Flight, get over and done with. That was a good film. Get my face on the back like Steve-O. I always thought it'd be funny if you got a tattoo to like tattoo the every line, every crease on your body so you just look really old. Thank you for the $2 super chat, uh, Big Shark. That's most kind of you. Thank you very much. Cheers for the donation. Cell shaded. Yeah, you'd look cell shaded. <laughs> But do it with like glow in the dark uh, ink, so then like they only see you at night. <laughs> like during the day, you can't really see it. But then at night, you like glow your lines all sort of. Uh, up. Hello, Saurus Rex says hello. Hello. Or isn't there the, isn't there, what's that, is there black light, like specific ink or um, paint or something? It might just be paint, I don't know if they do ink. But that like thing that's completely invisible and then you shine a black light on it. And then you can see it, it's like you could do that. David says, thoughts on Gone with the Wind? Uh, I watched it years ago um, and I borrowed it on DVD and I, I enjoyed it for the most part but... I can't really remember much of it, and it was insanely long. I know it was on two discs, like four hours or something. But not, that's not a complaint because I watched Lawrence of Arabia the other day, which is on, uh, which is four hours long, and Cleopatra, which I both bought on Blu-ray and DVD. And it was actually quite fun because they start off with like 
both fil- those films start off with like a black screen and they play like classical music over it. It's like you're almost in the theatre waiting for the film to start. And then they actually have intermissions around the halfway point because they're, they're so insanely long. But I remember those films being a bit more engaging for me, for my tastes, especially Lawrence of Arabia. That film's a masterpiece. But um, I remember Gone with the Wind was all right. I, I did enjoy it, and I can see why it was a classic. But I wasn't uh, wasn't too 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 engaged with it. UV tattoos as yes, well. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Ultraviolet light. Uh, favorite Paul Newman movie. You're going to have to enlighten me on who Paul Newman is. Phantom Limb says, The most I remember from Gone with the Wind was being on free VHS tapes when I was little. Mm. Still need to see Lawrence. Ever since I saw Prometheus in theaters, I wanted to see it. Oh, there's so much, so many connections between that and uh, and Prometheus. Like, the, even the dialogue, Big things have small beginnings. What David says, that's a line from... Uh, from uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Cool hand, Luke. The color of money. Yeah, I, d- I don't know. I haven't really watched any of those. Although, if the color of the mo- is color of money, uh, the Eddie Murphy movie. Because if it is, I have seen that. So I'll go with that one. That's my favorite Paul Newman movie. <laughs> if that's the Eddie Murphy movie that I'm thinking of, the one where he gets like really. He gets loads of money, and he has to like work out what he wants to do with it. Are you hyped until Jurassic World Dominion comes out, says Elasaurus Rex. I will try to be hyped until that film comes out, but I may flag. Covid doesn't help, you know. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Mikey. Hello, Mikey. How you doing? It says, just looked at the Gone with the Wind DVD. It's 224 minutes, exactly. Oh, Trading Places, says Phantom Limb. Mm. Yeah, okay, so that's that might be the one I'm thinking of. Trading Places. Okay, uh... So now, let's grab this. Go around all these reeds. Oops, I may have uh, just messed up. Oh no, I messed up again. It's like that game where you have to go through the, uh, you have to move the little loop around the... (laughs) squiggly bit of metal and then if you touch the edges it gets okay carefully does it now okay that'll do so we've got those and then I'm going to duplicate the layer and we're going to mirror them, so we're just going to duplicate the numbers. Like so. And where it starts to look like it's... I don't know, does that work? Yeah, where it starts to look like it's doubling up. Get rid of some of these. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Now we're just going to get the lighting on these bad boys. 
Is Burger King my favourite fast food place? Asked David. No, if I have to pick any fast food place, I'm probably just going to go with standard McDonald's. Because that's genuinely fast food. I can't pick somewhere like Nando's or anywhere like that because they feel more like restaurants to me. Because they actually take time to bring your meal out. Big Shark says, I'm glad we're getting to see more of the Tan 15 area, or at least what we know right now. I have a question, Big Shark. Do you know what Tan 15 means? Have you figured it out yet? Uh, no, David. I, I can't say I like Percy Jackson because I just haven't seen it. And I don't really care for it. Phantom says, so cool seeing you do this stuff. Blows my mind what people could do with Photoshop. Such a great program. Do you use a bamboo pad by any chance? No, I use a, uh, a hu Huion called a, if you can see the name there, Huion, and it's it's really big. And it's a wireless one, even though I've got it plugged in at the moment, but it's a pretty big one. I've read a lot of Alien comics. Either the name of the diner or a reference to something else. Mm. Okay. Okay. He's on it. He's got the idea. Phantom Limb says, is Tan 15 the start of to Indy in a way? No, it, it wasn't, but uh, you're not the first to point that out. <laughs> Someone else pointed that out in, in the Discord group. They're like, is it is it a nod to Indy with Tanis, the city of Tanis? But no, uh, it was just a happy accident. So now uh, I need to duplicate this background again. This time we're going to cut out uh, the entire top bit. Yo, Lewis, what's up? How are you doing? Phantom Limb says, is the number related to how big the paddock is in terms of meters? Uh, no. You should, you, if you look at the maps, you should be able to work out what the numbers mean. Have you seen James Bond movies? Yes, I've seen a lot of James Bond movies. Lewis says, "I'm tired now. Are you doing? Are you doing great, Jack? Yes, yes, I'm doing really good, really good." Oh well, despite the uh, the second lockdown in the UK, it does mean I get to live streams on Sundays now, as well as Tuesdays, just for the time being. And then when lockdown lifts, I'll probably have to go back to being uh, back to Tuesday live streams only. But yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm happy that I at least get to uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I at least get to do a bit more work on this. and stream it for you guys. Phantom Limb, Phantom Limb says, can't be the amount of species in the paddock, right? Because I thought they had only bred one at a time. Hmm. Well, yeah, well, you think, think of this, Phantom. <laughs> How many Kamara sources did they have in episode one? How many uh, Kentra sources did they have? 
And what was the reason that um, Mia said that they bred them one at a time? But you are right. Uh, that is that is correct. That is the population number. the gradient overlay on this on this layer we'll go for we kind of do want a yellow because of the sunlight Be some little beasties. Mm. Mikey says, even though we've had two lockdowns, the time has flown. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. it feels like it's flown even more because for me, because I've got this, I've got the baby, so the uh, seeing her, she's getting big so quick, it's crazy. Big Shark 9000 says DR10 is the hidden one. Mm, no. Uh, is the species. Oh, wait. Uh, Lewis says I haven't experienced the lockdown yet, but sometime it's necessary. Yeah, you're in Korea, right? So you've. Uh, you in Korea? Where am I got, have I got that wrong? My apologies if I have got that wrong. Is the species Tannis? <laughs> Tannius. Yeah, Korea, yeah. Okay, I'm glad I got that right. <laughs> Tannius. Hmm, what is Tannius? Thoughts on Inception. Uh, it's a fun movie. I wish they'd done a little bit more interesting stuff with the dream worlds I actually watched it recently it's, it's pretty good pretty enjoyable movie if I do say so myself I'm looking at species that begin with tan <laughs> Big Shark 9000 says, my guess would be Tanistrophius. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know what is Tannis, but it reminds you of Tannis 7 from your Masrani Global. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. Oh, is that what yeah, you were saying, um, Phantom? The Tannis 7 smartphone or whatever <laughs> thing we came up with for that Masrani website. If you, like, can I ask you guys a question? If you guys guessed it right in the chat, would you want me to reveal it? That's my next question. If you guys guessed it right in the chat, would you want me to reveal it? David says, thoughts on the Dark Knight trilogy? Uh, loved Batman Begins, loved Dark Knight. Love the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Fun trilogy. Big Shark says, keep it a secret. Okay. Krask says, you're the creator of this series. No, I'll, I'll keep it a secret. I mean, I'll say this. I, I, I will... Say this, if I was to reveal it, it would definitely make uh, live streams a bit easier because I'd be able to work on one of the frames that I've been working on and I'd actually be able to do some animation for the creature on a live stream. So you'd actually be able to see that if I was to reveal it, which would be kind of fun and it would be a bit different. And instead of backgrounds, we'd get to actually animate some dinosaurs. <laughs> that's the that's the plus side. So, like for example, next Tuesday stream could be really interesting. Keep it a secret, says Mikey. All right. Okie dokie. Patiently trying to find the hidden one. Just trying to think if you needed any more clues for where that hidden one is. David says, are you going to make a Jurassic Park fan film? Uh, no. I don't need to make a Jurassic Park fan film. <laughs> like, I don't need to make a Jurassic Park fan film because there's fans making Jurassic Park fan films on the things that we've written on the website, so you know, it kind of makes me feel like I don't need to make one. It's more interesting watching people come up with stuff from the things I've written. Crash says, we know it's in the second half somewhere. It's a tale and it's animated. Decent stuff to go on. I'm going to keep searching as well for it. Question, is there a Dino Defenders Discord? No, but there could be one. I might make a dinosaur, uh, Dino Defenders Discord when we're sort of getting close to the release of episode 4 because then I can get everyone hyped up and while the, the hype's building, uh, you know, that get more eyes on it that way. But at the moment it's like kind of, I, I mean I can make it.
and uh, and then let it sit for a while. But I probably won't promote it or anything for a while. I'll I'll, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. I'll get I'll get one set up or something. Might as well just turn the Jurassic fans one into it. <laughs> but no. David asks, after you're done with this, what kind of streams are you going to do? Uh, oh, any, all sorts. I'll do live streams about video. Oh, I'll probably play some more video games. Uh, I've got a whole list of video games, or a whole pile of them actually, that I want to eventually play on stream. Um, Don't know, maybe some more Jurassic ones. Could be anything. I don't really know. Maybe, yeah, Phantom Limb says mix Dino Defenders and Jurassic together. What I could do is create a uh, a Dino Defenders section, in the, uh, like a chat board, in the Jurassic Fans one. Uh, Lewis asks, your thoughts about Jurassic Park 4 T-Rex man concept that I sent you? Uh, it looks insane and uh, definitely jumps the shark when it comes to being Jurassic Park and I'm so glad that we m missed that bullet and got the the new films that we have today <laughs> uh, Phantom Limb says when I got my paycheck Friday I blew it on getting the X-Files box set. Blew my mind how expensive it was. However, it's something I've really wanted. Yeah, the X-Files is great. Really good. I mean, my wife started watching that uh, not too long back, but we ended up giving up because the baby came along and distracted us and we did some other stuff. But we got about like five or six episodes into season one.
Hello, Night Train. What do you think about Pride and Prejudice? Uh, I like the story. Uh, my wife is really into the um, the old period dramas, and uh, and I, I'm partial to them too. I really I do like Jane Eyre. Um, I haven't never read the book though, but I've I've watched many adaptions of it uh, with my wife. Um, and I will actually get around to reading the book at some point because uh, I think I owe it to my wife to read it. That's her favourite book, I think, if I remember correctly. And she's got many copies of it. I bought her copies of it. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, however, um, I think I prefer Jane Eyre, but Pride and Prejudice I don't mind either. Uh, see you later, Lewis. Cheers for popping by. Phantom Lim says, "Yeah, it's a great show." However, Malcolm in the middle. How's Malcolm in the middle been going? How far are you in? We're in. We're up to the beginning of season five, so they've just had the baby. What's the plant? Yeah, they're reeds. They're like cattail reeds. Saying. Have you read any Frankenstein and Dracula books? I think I read Dracula when I was a kid uh, in middle school, but I don't think I, it probably sunk in because I was a bit confused about what I was reading. <laughs> Retroactively put Malcolm in the Middle as a prequel to Breaking Bad. <laughs> Opinion on the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, we went to the cinema and saw it, and everyone was cracking up. But me and my wife, we we were just we didn't really care for it. <laughs> we felt kind of bad because everyone was like chit like loving the movie, and we were sitting there like kind of not bothered by it whatsoever. Russell Crowe movies I've seen.
Okay, so I'm now gonna. I want to just neaten up the the leaves, or the stems. <laughs> Big shark watching episode three again while watching the stream. Man, you are dedicated. You are really dedicated. I like it. <laughs> Can I give you a jumping off point, Big Shark, if you're looking for this tail? <laughs> Big Shark is the MVP. I can give you like a point where you can start looking from. Which isn't the actual frame, but like it can give you a little bit more of a game to look for if you want. He says please. Oh wait, no, you didn't say please, I think he was just thanking Krask. Don't wanna say it unless he unless he actually wants it. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay, so go from when the lightning strikes. Keeps going to the wreckage. Concentrating on getting this detail right. I'd have to watch Hugo again, David. Uh, Krask, I thought I found the tail at one point, but it was a false positive. There's a shot after Kevin dies, and it goes to a wide shot in the upper left hand corner. I thought a tail move. Alas, it wasn't. Yeah. Eighteen thirty seven. I'll have to bring it up and then go to that time frame to tell you if you're right. Got an advert.
1837 onwards. I haven't read that many Godzilla comics, David. I've got a few of the IDW ones, but I haven't, uh, I haven't read a lot of them. You know, Forrest Gump. I like the movie. It's a good one. David mentioned Alien comics earlier. A really good one that I read from time to time is Salvation. I don't know if I've read that one. My favourite was Labyrinth. That one was the one. I thought that one was done really well. That's what I imagine, like... Uh, I'd love something like that for the next Alien film with David. Opinion on Singing in the Rain. Um, actually, I don't think I've ever seen Singing in the Rain. So I can't give you an opinion on it. Ah. Salvation written by the Hellboy. The Hellboy guys. See, we've got a mistake here. Look, that reads bigger than that other one that's in the foreground. So this one should be moved to the foreground like that. Favorite thing to have for lunch? A sandwich. So these ones are in the foreground, so we want them to be blurred more. Same for these ones as well. So cool how quickly Photoshop can allow you to tweak stuff like that. I mean, you can do anything on this. It's a really, really useful tool. Might actually change the color of those a bit. Ooh, there's another one to the to the right that I've been neglecting. You slowed down the helicopter spinning. <laughs> oh, there's a gag. There's a goof in that sequence that I'm. I was like, oh man. I only spotted it after it was done, and I was like, "Why didn't I not pick that?" That's like, it's the sort of um, continuity error that you'd get in like an old in one of the Jurassic Park films or something. <laughs> so I was like, oh, "I'll leave it in there." But yeah, there's like a proper proper movie gaff, which uh, 
I was like, oh, that's. I can see why these things can get past, no matter how much you work on it and you're scrutinising it. It's like you can overlook stuff. So the uh, is it the loop says Big Shark. Yeah. So the so the helicopter is spinning one way, but then when you cut to the inside shot, the outside, the way the background is spinning is the wrong way. <laughs> Krask says, I've got to rewatch The Land Before Time at some point. Recently watched DDX and those Kamaras gave me that feeling. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I might when I when I come to doing the the final big edit of Dino Defenders, when I stick all uh five chapters together and make the movie like the big one, I'll probably go back and tweak some of the animation on some of those, like the episode one. The way the Kamarasaurus comes up is a little bit jaggery for me, and there's some frames where I just want to tweak some of the look uh, of it. I want to George Lucas it. I want to make sure that I tweak some of it. Oh, I like Gladiator. It's a good film. Big Shark just says, well, Turner and Hunter just fell. Mm hmm. Interesting. see if I can add a glow. Oh, I want to make their stems a little bit more green. I'll say this big shark, if you get to uh I don't want to say it because it'll probably give it away. If you get to Kevin and... Um... Yeah, I don't want to give you too much of a clue, but if you get to Kevin and uh, Buzz, you've gone too far. green. Take this down to six. A 
opinion on John Wayne movies. I don't think I've seen a single John Wayne movie. If I did, I was a kid. I don't think I've seen a single one. Yo, Jurassic Room, how you doing? It's good to see you here. Come on, let's get the light right. I don't know, uh, David. Krask says there's a dialogue box that might need tweaking in the future. In episode 1 at 10.04, Jess says, but, but how did you acquire the Panasaurus DNA? It's a small thing. There's no rush to fix it. What's wrong with it? You might need to explain what's wrong with it. Uh, no, I haven't read any Star Wars books or comics. I'm not a big Star Wars person. Big Shark says, 1901, in the background, I think I found it. Let's see, uh, are you on to a winner? Corner left. Mm. It's not saying 1901 on my phone, but you're right about the location. Uh, it's very close. I'm going to say yes, you've got it, because my I don't know why my phone is not saying 1901 for it. It says like 1903. But if, if Big Shark, explain in the shot what's happening. The monster of monsters has arrived. Hello. Is your favourite book series Lord of the Rings? No, no. I've, ne I've never read Lord of the Rings. My favourite book series is every Michael Crichton book. <laughs> uh, you forgot I'm the Imperial Diamond Spinosaurus. Oh, hello, welcome back. Big Shark 9000 says, the tower is falling and a reddish dino tail walking away. No, then you're wrong. <laughs> I want to see what you're seeing. Let me uh, cop to an advert again. I want to see what you're seeing. I'm just going to watch the thing back. Nope. Oh, you're so close, though. You're so close. Ah, oh, so funny.
Tone of service is high, and no, it looks like you've got the fur. And I know it looks like you got furloughed from your job. Yes, yes, it is true. I did get furloughed from my job. Still get paid, which is good and bad, I guess. Good in some ways that I'm okay right now, but bad because of the future. It's like that money is coming from somewhere. It's coming from my pocket in the future. Or at least I think that's how it works. Uh, let's add a shadow. As soon as you find it, Big Shark, I'll, I'll literally pull up on stream. <laughs> videos from your old channel and this channel that I deleted are you going to re-upload them uh, no no hey hello Derek how you doing welcome to the stream okay so I think I'm pretty much happy with this for the time being I'm just gonna add a few more bits of grass reeds down the bottom. those, convert that to a smart object. I just want to see about the exposure. Actually, I kind of like that as it is. Maybe I'll change the color. Saturation. Mm. Who'd you kill, Jack? Says Jurassic Room. What do you mean? What are you talking about? I haven't killed anyone. Oh, you talk about the siren in the background. <laughs> I just got it. Um, yeah, because so I live like next to this sort of main road. So, so there's this where I live. There's this place called well, it's like a it's called the Ring Road because it's like a giant ring that goes around the entire city. And we live on like the edge of the ring, so lots of emergency services use it.
David says, I just say one, I appreciate what you're doing for this. For the fans, I've been watching the channel for a long time. You're really nostalgic to me and you're a super nice person and amazing. Thank you, David. That's really nice, nice of you to say. Billy Bob Ray, the ring of fire. <laughs> Um, is that nineteen oh three? Says Big Shark. Okay, he is he on it? Is he has he got it? Yeah, I think he's got it. Yeah, <laughs> I think Big Shark. Big Shark's finally found it. Katie says, the brushes look amazing. Ah, thank you. Um, oh, I just, yeah, there's one more thing I wanted to add. Thank you, Big Shark, for the $2 donation. Uh, Jurassic Room says, I'd also recommend Big Jake and Eldorado if you ever want to see a good John Wayne movie. Oh, maybe I will check them out one day. I've heard of them. I've heard of El Dorado. Titan of Herb says, found what? Uh, Big Shark found the secret animated part of a dinosaur that is in episode 3 that isn't the Megaraptor. This is because I was editing uh, or making episode 3 and I realised, hang on, there's only one dinosaur in episode 3, which is the Megaraptor. And I thought, what if I put a sneaky extra one in? So... There's the shot where uh, the hunter and Turner, the tower, gets knocked and it tips over and falls into a paddock. So I thought there's a perfect opportunity to add in an extra little detail. So in episode three, you have this shot here of Turner falling. And if you look in the bottom left, you've got whatever lives in this paddock. Just it's very subtle. You can just see it. Let me zoom in. Just down here, look. Ooh. And you can see just very briefly the tail goes off screen. Sleepy Dreamer, wake up and see, says uh, Big Shark 9000. <laughs> you can see, yeah, he falls into the paddock. And that's funny enough, you've got the cattail reeds just in the background here. That is what we are editing here. We're in that we're in that paddock. So well done, Big Shark. I know it's like it's really, really subtle and it must it must have been quite annoying to, to try and find that. But um but Lash, you did it. You did it, my boy. Title name Big Shark found it. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll change the stream title to that. Phantom Limb, so cool how many little nuggets are hidden, not to mention all your other nostalgic knowledge you've added that have yet to be discovered. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned the uh, opening credits. Has anyone worked out the opening credits yet? What nine? Because there's a lot of 90s nods in there, and there's. I mean, I don't know if I should tell you what this is. I could probably actually show you because I think I've got it with me. Um, but there's like a lot of nods to other things other than Jurassic and Alien in it because it's like a nostalgia trip of that period for me. Reminds you of Doctor Who, but you know it's not it. Yeah, it's not Doctor Who. Um, I don't know if I have the credits I could show. I actually have it on me still. Well, 
What's your opinion on Doctor Who? Um, I'm not really a big fan. I used to like watching the old ones uh, whenever they were on TV when I was a kid, but uh, I never really fully got into it. I wasn't into it when they brought it all back and whatever. Um, okay, yeah, so one more thing I want to add in is a shaft of light. So we're going to do... We're going to do a green one, so we're going to do it like this. can use the dodge tool on these back ones to really brighten them up so it looks like the sunlight has hit them. <laughs> Big Shark says I can finally leave episode 3 alone now. Well there is another dinosaur in no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If there was, she'd go find it. Yeah, the opening credits to episode one are a homage to uh, the opening title credits of Toy Story 2. So if you look up the way the opening titles of Toy Story 2 open up, I believe they're on YouTube. Um, let me just check. Obviously I'm not going to be able to uh, the opening credits. Let's see. Yeah, so there's there's you can find it on YouTube. There's like a, a nod to the opening credits of Toy Story Two, just because I really liked the way those uh, the intro came in. When I was a kid, I thought those opening titles were really cool. Oh yeah, it's like exactly the same Phantom Limb. <laughs> he says, wow, that totally went over my head, but now I see it. Yeah, it's like, um, it's not subtle at all. It's like even the movements. I, I sent it to Manuel. I was like, I want the credits to basically be the opening of Toy Story 2. You know, we go through the opening the opening uh, production credits come in and then fly towards the camera and then we go through the Dino Defenders logo. Which again, I might get him to remake when, if he if he's up for it, um, when I come to do the big edit, because I want to like tweak it so it looks even cooler. Phantom Limb says, "Is Turner's stress toy a reference to something?" It's Godzilla. It's Godzilla. He's squeezing Godzilla. <laughs> it's like a little Godzilla toy. Well, I say it's meant to look like Godzilla, but it's not, you know, obviously for copyright reasons, it can't actually be Godzilla. But it's like something that, if you look at it, has the little spikes on the back and 
Something like that. Is your favourite animal the cat, says David? Yeah, why not? No, my favourite animal is probably the great white shark. Because it's so ancient. And terrifying. Okay, I should stop doing this. I think this, this shot... Oh my god, I just noticed a huge mistake. Oh good, it's on that layer. Look at that plumpy... Let me blur those. Wait, my guy. Look at that plumpy... Reed in the background. Oh man, I'm gonna have to... Sort that out. are so creepy but in a good way <laughs> opinion on gremlins I like gremlins I like both both the gremlin movies they're fun Krasky is my favourite animal is the human Z because <laughs> it's a big shark yeah exactly have you seen the Sarah Connor TV show asked David no mm -mm -mm. okay so let's uh Yeah, okay, I'm going to save this, and we're going to open up something else now. We're going to make, we're going to edit something else. Blank frame, and we're going to work on the background. I can move that in there, I can move that in there, I can move that in there. That's more jungle stuff. Um, oh man! If any of you guys had said yes, reveal, reveal that creature, we could be working on some dinosaurs right now. But oh well, you wanted it kept a secret. <laughs> We're going to have this. Actually, that's a good idea. Have that like that. Yeah, he is for the best, Big Shark. Don't worry. I'm only joshing. Yeah, Jurassic Room, I started watching Terra Nova ages ago, and I didn't think much of it, but I only watched like the first few episodes, but maybe I should probably go back and watch it at some point. There's so much stuff to watch, and there's so much stuff to do, though. It's like the time, any free time now, I'm working on uh, Dino Defenders. So I'd love to go back and watch some of that, just see what it was like. There's just something about TV shows that are like kind of cheesy to me. I got it with um, that Bloomin' Dinotopia series and Primeval. I got a bit of it when I saw that, or what I did see of it when it was out. Save it for a teaser trailer, says Big Shark. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> Dinotopia. Big Shark says, I get the feeling someone is going to get ripped apart in the swamp.
Krask says Turner is going to meet a new friend. <laughs> oh, actually, then, if I if I get this, uh, maybe I could have worked on the frame that I was working on. The sort of like where I'm up to. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll continue with this. No, actually, I want to work on that because it's more interesting for you guys. So, let me save this as. Uh, Megalosaurus trees front. I'll come back to this at some point, but I want to work on what I was working on just before the stream started. Um, it was, I believe it was, let me just double check, I'm just going to uh, get rid of Photoshop just in case this is a spoiler. Uh, no. Okay, so here we, <laughs> here we go. So we're going to... I was editing this. So I was just editing his arm. Derek Porter asks, Hey Jack, have you heard that Jurassic World Dominion has wrapped filming? Yes, I have. Phantom Limb says, Damn, uh, Turner is old school as fuck holding a floppy disk. <laughs> Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Well, I can show you, now you've seen this, I can just quickly show you this frame. I did this frame here. Where he's like, sitting there bleeding out like, ugh. <laughs> Get your get your gore in there. Monster Ma Monster of Monsters says if there isn't a reference to El Floppo Robert Muldoon toy, I'll be very disappointed. That's a good idea. Maybe I should put in a, a reference to El Floppo. There's actually a really good way I could do that reference, actually. If I remember to do it, I'll, I'll put it in there when I come to it. But oh my god, yeah, I've, I've just thought of a brilliant way of doing it. Tone of Serpent says he feels bad for the guy. <laughs> If anyone follows me on Instagram, you'll know what's on this floppy disk because it's. Uh, I posted a picture of the, the floppy disk on this on there. I changed the. Uh... Oh no! I didn't mean to open the video pad. So bear with me, guys. I accidentally opened up the editing software. We'll change the music. Change it to.
What other dinosaur movies have you seen that you've not reviewed in Jurassic June? Um, <laughs> well, Jurassic World. <laughs> Big Shark says, Jack, for a tier, you should have become an extra tier. I would have definitely funded that. Uh, what do you mean, extra tier? Extra tier. Is that a joke? So all you have seen is just Jurassic World. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. What dinosaur movies have come out since 2014 that I've seen? Uh... I don't know, I can't really think what, aside from all the Jurassic movies, like, I don't think there's been any others. Uh, I'm just going to open up Turner's character sheet. I use. So I actually do want to cut this out. I always find this is more interesting than doing jungles all the time. This is the juicy stuff. You get to be a background or an extra character, says Big Shark 9000. Oh, well. I don't know how I would be able to implement that, actually. Because there's only a certain number of characters in the show. I mean, unless. There is a chance to do that, but I don't. I don't know. If I feel bad because it's like if if you do a tier like that and like four people pay towards that tier, it's like, um, and I've only got two characters to fill. It's like, who do I choose? Kind of thing. That's probably why I didn't do that. Actually, I want to lower his cheek, don't I? Yeah, Jurassic Room, I agree with you. You'd seriously think people would be catching on dinosaurs with a sex sex. I mean, they, they are. There's all those, like, B-movies, but I don't count those.
Okay, so now let's get the colour onto him. Um, oh my word. Hello, not so clever at this. Says, welcome. This is a well, this is a welcome surprise. Good morning, Jack. And I'll say, hello there. Uh, Titan Surf says, if they were to make a modern walk of dinosaurs, would you want them to uh, do the same type of places or would you want different new ones? I'd want latter. It'd be cool to see Velociraptors and Protoceratops. Yeah, I, I think that'd be cool. They did like a six episode uh, sequel to Walk of Dinosaurs that just went to different time periods to show us different things. I'd welcome that. It'd be really cool. According to Clayton, Universal has stomped out Torok and Dino Crisis films, but honestly, how good, cool would it be to him being, I mean, Torok might be good, says Phantom Limb. Yeah, it is a shame. We should do a, all do a watch along with Peter Jackson's King Kong next month for the 15th anniversary, says Jurassic Brim. I wish I could join you, but I'll probably be busy with family and Christmas. <laughs> If we're allowed to even meet up. Big Shark 9000 says DR10 and TAN15 are in the same paddock or at least close, right? Yeah, they're in different paddocks. Uh, one second, guys. I'll be back in two seconds. <laughs> I'm muted, I'm so sorry. I didn't realise. <laughs> Let me go back to what I was saying. Uh, what was I saying? I said DR10 and TAN15 are in the same paddock, or at least close, right? Asks Big Shark, and I said they're very close. Um, watching Peter Jackson's King Kong Black and White Crask, yes, that's the only way to watch that movie. 
then I talked about what Godzilla merchandise I own, but it, I basically said I've got a lot of stuff. It's, it would take me too long to go through it all. Uh, but my most prized possession, aside from the films, is the 1998 Godzilla puppet that I own. <laughs> Thank you, Stupid Dinosaur, by the way, for pointing that out. Edges. Have you seen the dinosaur movies from the 1920s to the 2000s that you've not reviewed in Jurassic June? Uh, I, uh, I don't even know. I'd have to really think about what movies I've seen. And I'm already concentrating too much on this. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Phantom Rim says, I'm kind of surprised the schlocky carnosaur films never got revived by Asylum or someone else after Jurassic World. Nothing like a really cheesy dinosaur film to laugh at. Mmm. Never not so clever that they said, would Jay Jurassic Park the game work as a movie? It would actually, but it would need a lot, uh, like a bit of tweaking. I, I reckon it could work quite well. It would just need uh, a, a bit of tweaking to some of the some of the details and change the character from Jerry Harding to someone else. That's what I say. And obviously, the T-Rex bursting out of the visitor centre doors would need to change. <clears throat> you could burst out of a wall or the side of a window or something. <gasps> oh. <laughs> you look surprised. <gasps> Big Shark 9000 says, my guess of what DR10 is, is either drip, Dryptosaurus or Dryosaurus. Or it's not even a dinosaur. Mm, good guesses. Good guesses. I'll say what, what the DR uh, creature is, is something I saw and I was like, I want to put that in the show. That's really cool.
I just want to get rid of his head underneath. Wait, why have we got Christmas? Silent Night? We don't want Silent Night. It's not Christmas yet. What are you talking about? Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll put it on. Uh, I want the. I'm going to put this on instead. Will you consider trespass a cannon? Says David. No, I don't consider trespass a cannon. There's too many inconsistencies. Opinion on the Shrek movies. Shrek 1 is fun, but I don't care about the rest. They're all just stupid films, aren't they? <laughs> Shrek memes, they were funny. But, you know. No, I haven't seen Mandy F Phantom then. No, I haven't read any Stephen King books, David. Yeah, Phantom Limb. I enjoy the Shrek memes more than I do the films. Yeah, me too. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, oh, he, he... Oh, yeah, I forgot. He has uh, blood all trickling down his nose, doesn't he? Ooh, that would have been a continuity error. So now what we're going to do is copy this. So we've got two of him. I'm going to go back because I need before I put his head on. So we've got one version of Turner where he's looking down. So we'll name that layer down. I'll just make sure I can put it in the right place. Would you rather see if the 2011 game would be canon, a book of a story as canon, or a game as canon? I don't quite get the question, David. Big Shark says, let's hope Hunter can help. Mmm. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, now, you see we've got the body, we've got the head here, so this head, I want to basically move his facial ex expressions around facial features around so we're going to do oh no actually we'll redraw it we'll redraw it entirely uh, layer new and we actually want him head on do I have one this one. So if I do the same with this one, I swing it around and make it Hmm. 
Yeah, okay. So let's go layer new, make a new layer, and we'll. Get it so he looks up. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, see you later, Derek. Thank you very much. He says, good luck on the rest of your stream. Uh, Stupid Dinosaur says, am I, am I the only one who's annoyed that they use Koala Ranch so much? Hawaii is beautiful, yet they keep using that one part of it. I think it is... It Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like there's rocks in... Uh, you get in Star Trek, and they're in like a million films or whatever. Vasquez Rocks, whatever they're called. Oh, Phantom Limb has just said that doesn't bother me. Uh, I actually like it when they reuse you lo locations. Vasquez Rocks comes to mind. There you go. First used in Star Trek. So yeah, it's okay. I get it though. It's like I think it's annoying when it come when you see uh, see them in something that's close to Jurassic. So like they were in obviously they're in Fallen Kingdom and Jurassic World. But in between that, they were also in the new Jumanji remake or um, sequel. Sorry. And I think when that happens, it's a bit off-putting. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of these, and we're going to just colour in his head again, this time, put it like this. Uh, Big Shark says, Bob Turner, venture capitalist, to be, to be stuck, un stuck on a rock. And a hard place. <laughs> well, <laughs> I like that you're seeing the visual metaphor. David asks, the Jurassic 2011, would you rather see as a book canon story or the canon game? I, 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 again, I don't get what you mean. What's the Jurassic 2011? Are you talking about um, Jurassic Park the game? Because that's already a game, so I'm not quite sure what you're, what you're asking. It's a bit confusing, if I'm honest. Are you saying if they adapted it into a movie... Have you seen any of the Jurassic Time adaptations or the different JP scripts? It's never not so clear with this. Uh, yeah, I was in one of the Jurassic Time adaptions. I played a Thomas Hammond, which was John Hammond's son, and it was like a. I worked with Derek on making an album. I think he's kind of. He didn't really like it that much, which is fair enough. But we just did it as a bit of fun. We had this like, an ex a version where Thomas Hammond's going through his father's old tapes, in this like after his death and then he uh, f listens back to it and I would come in playing Thomas Hammond uh, who would come in with my own chapters that we wrote I can't even remember it now it was like just but I think it was just before Derek did the the gold edition
I even designed the cover for it. Let me see if I can quickly find it. Jurassic Time. Jurassic Park. Just need to find. I think you put it up on the video. Maybe it's on Trezcom. Looks like their website's gone down. Trezcom. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I don't think he's got it on the main Trezcom website. Anyway, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll find it another time. Okay, so, Turner. Turner. Turnerino. Let's get the colours right on him. Do 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 says only been up for a few minutes and I see you're live. I can actually watch that one on time. Hello there, welcome. <laughs> I've only got like I've got forty minutes left of streaming, so you get Good old 40 minutes of me doing this and then I'll have to duck out and then I'll be back on Tuesday doing a live stream. I'm hoping I can get this done so then you guys can see the editing process for this bit. So I'm just seeing if I can get this done on time and then I'll put it into the edit. Big Shark says, uh, "So Hunter's arm is broken. Maybe Jude got whiplash. Wesley right, uh, Wesley's right side is bleeding, and Rose is on her deathbed. The rest are unknown." Yeah. to make his nose a bit thicker so it matches with that one so it doesn't look jarring when it goes from a thick line to thinner lines
Uh, have you seen The Frighteners? Asked David. Yeah, I, I own The Frighteners on DVD. I love that movie. <laughs> Give him a little mouth flip. Ooh. Okay, so now I can get rid of. Oh, no, not that one. I can get rid of that. Go back to this one and then start sorting out some of this. So his head looks a little bit thinner. Let me sort this out. To bring that up a little bit. Obviously the blood. I need to do the blood. Let's do that now, because then I can get the thing right. Turner's eyes reminding me of the Terminator. It says Big Shark 9000. Hello, Mike Shatter, by the way. He says I'm late. Um, the eye, there is actually uh, a reason why I put his eye like that. The eye was meant to be kind of like a nod to Ripley's eye in Alien 3. I'm not even kidding about that. Like when I was. Uh, yeah, I'm not just saying that. Like when I came to do the damage, I was like, oh, you know, like in Alien 3, Ripley, when she's pulled out of like cryo sleep or whatever, she has that one bloodshot eye. I just thought, that's kind of cool. Let's let's do that. Ooh. There you go. That's him noticing something. Never not so clever. This is I predict the Turner will make a full discovery and marshal the survivors to safety. I'll have to wait and see. Let's just uh, give him a little bit more of a. Okay, so now we have got two. Um, I might just actually. Warp the arm down a bit just so there's a little bit more animation. So now he, he will kind of go. His arm will move down. Maybe move some of the clove the lines over. So now what we're going to do is merge those, 
and then save that as up. Now I'm just going to save these, so I'll save the background first. As we'll just turn a scared one BG background. Save that, and we'll save down as save as episode four. We'll save it as turn a scared down PNG so we've got no background and then up as you can see there's actually a little bit I want to just tweak there file save as and we'll save that as Turner Oops. my word PNG, Turner Scared, up. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'll just go back and what's going on there? Oops. There we go. So I'm going to save this. Just so I've got the edit, just in case I need to do it again. Save as Turner Scared Edit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is open up the editing software. Let's see what you guys are saying. Oh, you're onto the Alien franchise now. Phantom Limb says to me, Ripley's story is Aliens 1 to 3, Prometheus is, uh, and Covenant are super tasty appetizers. See, I look at it as, um, I'm actually going to just move my webcam, because I noticed when I did this last time that my Bloomin' logo was in the way. So I'm going to just shove myself right, right in the middle. I'll put myself there, actually. Um, the, like... Alien 1 to 3 is Ripley's story, and then Alien, uh, Prometheus and Alien Covenant, and whatever the next ones would be, that would be the anti Ripley story. So Ripley's trying to save humanity from the aliens, where David's trying to destroy them. So it's David's uh, story. So now we're in the editing software, we're going to add in the files we've just made, and then I'm going to open up, we're going to add some atmospheres. And we also need the bars like that. So first we'll put the background down and we'll have it go for three, five, six. We'll do six seconds of him looking down like this. I'll move the background. And then we're going to get the shot of him looking up <laughs> now I noticed something here his head kinda needs to, and I wonder if this will work because this, sometimes this doesn't work, so if I go to Photoshop again then I open up the one I want to edit, which is this one, and then I just edit what I want to edit, which is I want to just make his ear I want to put his ear a little bit more in. And his head, I want to bring his head in a little bit more. Now if I click save, ah, I didn't do it. Okay, so 
if I delete that. Sometimes on my old, before my laptop crashed, I could edit in Photoshop and then it would automatically change it in the editing software. But on this Windows computer, it doesn't seem to do that. So if I remove the file from the editing software, I should be able to save it now. There we go. And now if we go back to the edit and then reintroduce that file, we should have changed. So let's see, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that's better. That looks a lot better. Doesn't look so weird now. Now I might try and add like a crossfade. So we'll see, but make it short. So we'll make the crossfade like So let's try this. And see what it looks like. I yeah, see it's too too long. So it needs to be like 150, 150 milliseconds. There you go. So I've just been neglecting the chat for a second. How many Stanley Kubrick movies have I seen? Asked David. Uh, 2001, Clockwork Orange, um, uh, Eyes Wide Shut, uh, AI if you want to count that one, The Shining. Um, what's the one about the, the war room? I can't remember the name of it now. Whether the war room one is, I think that's about it. So six. I've never seen Full Metal Jacket. Ah, oh, see, I like the neomorphs. I like the fact that they uh, took um, what's his face's artwork and then uh, repurposed it. Okay, so we've got these things here. Doctor Strange Love David, yeah that's the one. These are called atmospheres so you can see they add smoke. So this this one keeps pumping it in. I think this is the one I would like. See that's 12 seconds long so that should perfectly match over this. If I actually if I bring it Want it like that, and then change the clip speed to uh, is it 12 seconds? Oh my word! Set that to 12 seconds, and then cut that off the edge. We should have a little bit of an atmosphere here, so it's like the smoke. And then he looks up like, oh. and then we need to add. Oh, actually, what we're gonna do? Can you guys see what I'm doing? Yeah. Um, what we're going to do is export this and then I'm just going to save it as uh, Turner Scared 1 put it in 2k right that's just rendering hello Raptor Studios what do you animate on? Uh, I'm using uh, Videopad and Photoshop those two programs Krask says, if you ever did a misconception video on the Alien franchise, I'd like to see him about the term Xenomorph. Because technically every alien we've seen in the franchise is a Xenomorph. If we go by the actual definition of the term. Yeah, Xenomorph. Strange shape. Xeno strange morph shape. Xenomorph. That's, that's literally what they are. <laughs> Never not so clever like this. says, nerd! Okay, so we just made that, so let's delete all what I've done here. And then import the video I just made. Like this. Got the atmosphere, the smoke, and then he's like, hmm, and he sees it. I mean, I just went over the footage, but yeah, you can see him look up. 
and then what we're going to do is get the frame edge, which are the bars. I'll actually, get them to go there, and just want to change the scale a bit because there's always a couple of pixels off. You can kind of see it up here. I don't know if you're going to be able to zoom in on the, the live stream, but for some reason it puts the the bars like it takes a pixel out of the edge. So I have to change the scale, which should change now. And that's good. So we've got the bars. And now what I want to do is go to, and I'm actually going to show you guys this. So let me, uh, uh, is it display capture? Yeah, there we go. So if I go to this, you'll be able to see what I'm going to do. So I go down to effects here, and then we add in motion. Actually, no, I don't even need to add motion. Actually, it needs to be pan and zoom. And the start frame is going to be uh, in like this. And then the end frame is going to be the whole thing, so it zooms out. So it's going to be a very subtle zoom out. I say very subtle. So it's like this. And there we go. And that is, let me uh, stop the display capture. I don't know if the stream's coming through okay because it's saying, error, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain su smooth streaming. Viewers will experience buffering. Oh, I hope not. Hopefully it's okay now. But yeah, so there we go. So let me export that. And that is done. That is frame. What are we looking at? Frame 25. Okay, that's frame 25 done. I can see everything fine, says Phantom Limb. Okay, okay, good. YouTube's just been an idiot. Okay, so now if I close all this and go back to Photoshop, uh, close all this, no, do I save that? Nope, and then open up, well actually I just want to get rid of the editing software, uh, open up the frame I just made so you can see, we just made this frame here. There we go. Turn has seen something. Yeah, turned out pretty well. <laughs> okay, so now I've got 20 minutes still, so let's see if I can get another thing done quickly. Um, I'm just going to close Photoshop because I'm worried about spoilers, and I'll see if I can just... Not that one. Uh, no. Just trying to find a specific frame. Uh, ah, I've got it here. Um, let me just open up with watching something back. Okay. So what we want to open up is this frame here. And I just want to add in if I open up Fizz milk. Mikey says, fantastic, seeing it all come together frame by frame. Nice. Delta says, I guess you're glad you didn't use voice actors. Yeah. So we've got the floppy disk here, look. So we're going to take... Now that's a big floppy disk. Now 
take that all the way down. Big Chuck says episode 4 is going to be the best episode. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be great. And so we're going to... Really gonna see this because it's gonna be in the in the distance. But we will. So I'll show you the uh, the process of this in the editing if I can. I've got 15 minutes. So I'm racing against time. Uh, I do just want to tilt his head quickly. guys can see this right oh no you can't see this oh my god what have I done what have I done <laughs> hello Elmo plays Roblox I wonder if there's gonna be more hidden stuff Big Shark says oh there's so much oh episode 4 basically reveals a lot of the stuff but I, I think the ending the very end of episode 4 is gonna be the most oh I can't it's just gonna be crazy <laughs> You thought the ending of episode 3 was crazy. Yeah, the end of episode 4 is going to be someone else. It would be his action. Well, I, I don't know. I don't want to say anything. Okay, so that is done. Let me file save that as turn a layer 2. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go back into the editing let me open up the editing software and we're going to go to edit okay so new project let me add in all the bits I need Okay, we're going to try this. Is this based on true events like the Jurassic Park series? Uh, Jurassic Park series based on true events. That's the first I've heard. So we've got that and then platform layer. That goes over this. And then we've got the layer we just tweaked, which puts Turner in there, holding the floppy disk. And then we've got water, so we put the water layer on. And the water, we actually put an effect on it, which is a ripple. Uh, where's the ripple? Ripple effect. Because then that, if you can see, that actually Oh, it's not rendered. Why does it do that? Why does it disappear? Turn the intensity down. I wonder if that changes it. Oh, it doesn't do it. Why? Turn it down to six. Oh, that's annoying. Why does it do that? Oh, you know what? No, actually, I can't do that. Nefin answers episode three genuinely shocked me. Nice, that's what I like to hear. Count down the days till the Mega Raptor causes havoc again, said Nefin Art. <laughs> uh, Titan of Serpent says, I changed my mind. I think episode two is my favorite so far. Of course, I love all of them, but I think episode two is my favorite. What, um, what about episode two is your favorite? That's what I want to know. Right, let's put the debris on. That adds all the 
the debris. Oh, I wish this water would ripple. That's really annoying that it's doing that. Um, I mean, we can add waves. Would that work, or is it gonna? Oh, that does. That does kind of. Ugh. God, why does it disappear so much? Let me try ripple again. Oh, that's so. You can see when it plays, it just disappears. I do wonder if it's still there, though. Subtly. Or maybe actually I can cheat this. So if I add in the previous frame in the scene before I added anything, this one here, if it will play. Oh, even then it disappears. I didn't even notice that. Oh, interesting. Let me just see if that op if that in the fine in the actual final frame does that disappear? Did I miss a glitch? You have a look. You can see down the bottom here the water just disappears. The 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 rippling water. Oh, why did I miss that? That's annoying. Anyway, uh, okay, maybe I just have to. I wonder if I could do two. I wonder if I can copy it and then paste it. I wonder if I if I add two ripples on top of each other. Oh, I might have to add three. It like makes it disappear. It's really annoying. I can still I can kind of see it. Let's add four. Oh, it's, look, look how bright that is. You know what? There's actually a way around this, I think. Which is if I delete those, bring this down. There's a way around this. I might have to forgive the other layer. But uh, if I open up the water, here it is. If I like, copy paste. Copy. If I try and bring it back to where it was, I'm just in Photoshop at the moment, so bear with me. Actually, I can show you. If I go to Photoshop, I'm basically I've got all these layers of water because the original layer looked like this. It was like a subtle, very subtle thing at the bottom. But I'm copy and pasting it loads and loads and loads to bring it back into uh, focus so if I keep I think that'll do and then merge all these layers and then let me delete it from the uh, from the editing software again and save or maybe actually layer Add a. Because basically, the problem here is because it was transparent. For some reason, the computer is not liking it. So I'm going to see if if I can make it transparent in the editing software. It's kind of like what happened with the light. I think there's a glitch with the thing. It's like any transparent layer is like, and you want it to animate. It's not going to work. That's going to be really annoying going forward. But. Hopefully, we'll be able to fix it. Okay, so merge those. Save that. Go back to the editing software. Open up the water again. Okay, add the water. Okay, so the water is much more defined here. So now let's try the ripple. Yeah, okay, that's, that's kind of worked. At the beginning it kind of jolts, but now I can add the transparency, hopefully. Oh no. Maybe if I add the transparency first? Hmm. 
Episode 3 is, uh, yeah, it's my favourite. I loved episode 2 because we got to see a lot and the Dimetrodon sequence at the beginning is so awesome. I think the Dimetrodon is my favourite creature so far. Mmm. That's what I like to see. Phantom Limb says uh, Jack was the sole survivor and has been gracious enough to allow us to witness the events of Dino Defense Extreme. We say the project is a reopening video pad to fix the glitch. No, it's a glitch that's been going on for a while. Um, I'm trying to see like why... Oh no, that's the ripple. I don't want to change the ripple. The ripple's fine. Transparency. Why is... There's something about this, like, this particular image the computer hates. It's like the transparency goes from... Oh, there it is. Okay, so it needs to be like 90... Yeah, let's go 86 and the ripple. Okay, now does this work? Yes. Oh, okay. Look, it's bright at the beginning, but I'll, I'll trim that. Maybe I'll. Uh... Just change that to 88. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. That's really annoying. Oh well. Um, and then we've got the light. That's the final, final thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is export, export this. We'll export it as. Uh, Turner. Alone one. Might actually do this. This will be two frames done. Save it as 2K. Create. Okay, so that's making that. I want that image as my desktop background. What the destroyed base. Okay, so now. I'm gonna. Delete all that. Delete that. Gonna add in the file we just did. Uh, Turner alone one. Again. Oh, I totally no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Reverse. Reverse course. Totally forgot to do something. <gasps> oh my god. That would have been disastrous. Forgot to add in smoke. I think it's because I'm I'm closing in on running out of time, but we'll see. Uh, smoke. So let's add in some smoke effects. And three seconds? What am I thinking? What am I thinking? This should be at least ten seconds, so then I get more than enough of the shot that I need. Oh my word! Rookie mistake. Seeing how quick, like this is like speed editing. So is this is this the one that's too fast? Yeah, that's too fast. What about this smoke? Perfect. Let's add that in here. So that should be behind. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's behind. Everything. I might add another thing up there. Move that up one. Add this smoke in as well. Uh, I might even add like a an atmosphere in. Come on. 
So let's add some atmospheres. Let's add them all in. Uh, so every Sunday and Tuesday there will be a stream, says David. Uh, it's every Sunday 2 till... Um, Two till three, uh, twelve till three. Sorry. Okay, let's add that in. Let's cut that down to to there. And let's add an atmosphere. One right over the top. I actually do want to uh, change the transparency on this. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's better. Might just change the uh, where this smoke is. Just move it up to like here. That way you can see Okay, that's looking pretty good. Export. So now we're going to export this as Turner Alone 1. <laughs> we'll overwrite the last file. Create. Yep, overwrite it. Cretaceous Island says you're editing the video. Cool. And hello, good morning, Jack. Hello, and sorry, Cretaceous, I'm literally about to finish. Uh, Hello Jacob Arnold, welcome. <laughs> Hello and goodbye, because I'm literally about to finish once this is done uh, editing. I will, uh, I'll be heading off. Yeah, Fridays big shark. Big shark's right. On Fridays I work on Dino Defenders, but I um I don't record it. Um Okay, we're almost done. And then I just need to uh, Okay, so insert well, select all the files down here. Select all clips, delete, add files. We're going to add back in what I just did. So turn it alone. The first thing's first, I'm going to do it off so you don't see that glitch. There you go. Bloody water disappearing. But hopefully now the water should ripple, which it does. And there's smoke subtly in the background. Okay, so I'm just going to add a glow. Add a glow. And then we're just going to add the bars like I did last time. Uh, so add the bars on because this this shot is going to be basically just a wide shot of the whole thing. Just need to change the scale again. Don't think I'm going to want it to move much. Or maybe I will slowly zoom in. Only very subtly though. 
uh, I'll pause that and I want the end frame to be like there so so there we go that's what that'll look like so export this episode 4 we're gonna save it as frame 24 so we've gone back one frame we just did 25 with Turner looking up but now this is frame 24 so this is the one just before it and we'll save it in 2k and then I'll have a look at it and see if it looks good enough but anyway guys I think I'm gonna end the stream there so thank you very much for coming to today's stream everyone um, I really hope you've enjoyed watching this random uh, collection of painting reeds for an hour and a half and then doing a bit of editing uh, and showing you some of the processes of the frames um, be sure to share uh, the link to the Patreon which is there uh, with people and tell them to sign up um, thank you Big Shark for the one dollar donation that's most kind of you you are a true champion of this series Big Shark um, Phantom Limb says, I just want to say thank you for the stream and I'm glad to be contributing to the show. Always fun to pop up when able. Cheers. No, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, oh, it's done. Let me just see if this frame's good. Uh, I'm just going to watch it back. Yeah, that looks pretty good. He's got the little... Yep, that looks good enough for me. Okay, and yeah, so yeah, just share Dino Defenders with everyone, tell people about it, because the more people know about this, the, the cooler and better the series will be. Obviously, the more people who support the Patreon and all that, if I reach my goal, I'll be able to work on it 24-7, and, uh, and it'll be my job until the series is finished. So just share it with everyone, talk about it with everyone, and spread the word, and I will see you guys on Tuesday at 12pm UK time. See you later, guys.